Now, I'm sharing the Nigerian experience as it relates to the vaccine hesitancy resilience during the COVID-19 pandemic in the world. I want to appreciate the organizers for the opportunity to be part of this meeting. And then we'll be sharing our experience using this outline where we are on the COVID, the challenges we observe as it relates to hesitancy during the um, pandemic, what we are doing as a country, and what we are also doing to sustain the vaccine demand for COVID-19 and restore our routine immunization system, the lessons we have learned and practical advice way forward, and then our conclusion. As of today, 30th October, as of yesterday, 30th October, Nigeria has recorded about 260,675 confirmed cases of COVID with about 3,155 persons dying from it. The first vaccination in the country was on the 5th of March, 2021, and the government targeted reaching 70% of the eligible population of the country. And then the agency in collaboration with all our other stakeholders and then the partners have also worked tirelessly to ensure that we achieve herd immunity. And then the target is about being covered. We'll see shortly what we are as a target, but it has been slow compared to what we really intended initially. Of course, hesitancy contributed to it. As of yesterday, we've had about 81 million, 158 persons receiving first, uh, being fully vaccinated, which is about 69.99, and we are targeting 70%. I know by the end of today, tomorrow, we will have the 70% that we targeted as a country. And then over 93 million, 700 have received the first dose, 17 million, 480,000 have also received booster. This is where we are as a country, as of today. We are also looking at it by state. So we know the states that are doing very well and we know the states that are doing very poorly. At least 16 states have fully achieved the target for the nation. And we have five that are not doing very well. Those five we are doing not doing very well. We are also having special intervention that started three weeks ago to make sure that they also come up to speed. And this is why we are tracking on a monthly basis. We can see what is happening. And of course, looking at September here, we can see we had the first set of intervention for those poor performing state in September. And we could see how the numbers increased. And we are having another one that is coming up on the 1st of November, which will also bring for that. But I know with the daily vaccination ongoing, as at the end of today or tomorrow, we will achieve average 70% as a nation. And these are looking at it by phases in each of the phase strategies that we change, what led to the increase in the number. Now, we have also seen in routine immunization, as of 2019, we got up to about 71% by um, survey. In 2021, eight of the months of COVID in, we could see there was a dip because of the COVID affecting routine immunization. As a country, we are conscious of the fact that it affected it and we are working towards restoring immunization fully. And then just to mention that as a country, we also do the quarterly LQAS. We could see when we started in 2017, only 3% of the LGS passed lot. As at 2020-21, when we had the COVID, we could see a dip, but we are beginning to recover in the LQAS as we are achieving up to 60% vaccine, um, passing of lot of the LGS. What are the challenges? Generally, in spite of all that we have achieved so far as a country, working with our partners, there are challenges we had observed, which is goes from the coordination structure to the persistent hesitancy, and we are coming back to talk more on a little bit on detail on this hesitancy. We also had inadequate resources from the human, the vaccine itself, logistics that was required to fully respond. And then there was a little challenge of the vaccine that we needed to respond. Inadequate social mobilization activities at the beginning of it from rumors and so on. There was suboptimal integration and then challenges in data collection, which was eventually overcome. And then looking at the hesitancy itself, which has contributed to a decrease in vaccine coverage in the country and increasingly uh, the risk of vaccine preventable disease like we are seeing in the coming up in the country shortly. We documented a lot of reasons that would have been responsible for the hesitancy in the country. And some of those key things we documented as a country and that we are also tracking to um, ensure that we implement interventions to avoid include the no-failed net from lack of adequate knowledge and information about the importance of vaccination through to the increasing rumors and negative communication. And like we heard our colleagues mention earlier, there were a lot of these rumors at the beginning of it that those that take the vaccine 
will go mad and the rest from the first school, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, and all the other platforms. A lot of this was ongoing. And then the attitude of the health workers themselves and professionals and their recommendations, because we observed those health workers that did not take the vaccine themselves, they did not recommend. Of course, the people that depend on them were watching at their reactions and following suit with them. We also had issues with social, cultural, and religious belief, the lack of moral, social, culture, and then religious conviction and perception made some not to receive. Individual decision-making process and their risk perceptions also contribute uh, with some of them with the past experience they had, did not want to take the vaccine. And then we had, especially among the younger age group, the social pressure and social responsibilities that also contributed. This were some of the major things that we noticed that um, contributed to the hesitancy we noticed in the country. Then what we have done to promote and sustain our vaccine demand for COVID and then restore our routine immunization. A lot has been done. In the COVID implementation, we have transited from phase one to phase two to the phase three, as we saw the different numbers being reached in each of the, uh, the previous slide that we shared. What did we really adopt at the end that we saw gave us a lot of results was the scale strategy. In the scale strategy, the main pillars were the service delivery, the communication strategy, the accountability, logistics, the EMIT platform, electronic management of the immunization data, where we collected the data electronically and took real time lifetime decision, and then the supervisory integrated with other services that was ongoing. This approach really helped us a lot. And we did this using one country team, the plan and the budget. We were working together with the partners and the state to get this done. And we were also using integrated approach. Unfortunately, because of the time we have, I will not want to go into the um, um, details of it from the leadership, ACSM activities, logistics supply, the training, the service delivery, the supportive supervision, the data management were all integrated with other services using the same health workers to deliver services at that period. This is some of the uh, engagement that we had from the national level where we had the national leadership working with the state leadership to ensure that we get their buy-in. We're also working with the um, Senate arm of the government, make, taking them back to their grassroots, working with them to get closer to the people. We were also using webinar town hall meetings with the communities, traditional leaders, religious leaders, other opinion leaders. And it was very helpful because that provided opportunity for us to answer some of the rumors that people were hearing and were asking questions. And these are a typical engagement also of the leadership of the state. And then the religious leaders, we found out that the religious leaders, the traditional leaders were very helpful because the people in their community rely and depend on them. I've mentioned here, colleagues mentioned also, though these are typical uh, engagement that we had with them. And then we also had the leadership, the players themselves at the sub-national level, who are the ones that the, the public are looking at. These are the custodians of health at the sub-national level. We engage them to have their buy-in. And then looking at the picture in Nigeria, there are some areas that are security compromised. Of course, those areas also make people you know, not have adequate information to be able to know about the vaccine. We engage with the military authority to be able to reach out to those areas using their medical personnel and the rest of them. Our youth in the universities are also very helpful. They are the ones that could convince their parents. They are the ones that use the social media. We engage the leadership of all the Nigerian universities, both non-medical and medical students, and use them as agents of change. We also engage the celebrities in the country where they use their platform to talk to um, the public about the usefulness of the vaccine. And this was very helpful in convincing many. We also developed and circulated key messages that was very helpful where we shared with the public and a lot of them could answer some of the questions themselves. We had a vaccination site finder where online somebody wants to click it, put in the nursery details, it directs them to nearest point of vaccination. And this was very helpful. And then we also have at that same site, we had the call center 7722 where anybody calls and have any concern, it was answered to. This was the step-by-step -step guide that was available to the public on how they can get to the vaccination site, get their questions answered, receive the vaccine. We also use GTS and ODK for the supervisor so that those who were actually supposed to go to the field to monitor what was happening, answer questions, support and guide the health workers. We were tracking their actions. And then we also set up a joint task force that made up of the government, the NGOs, the security operatives, so that they can, those that who were against the program, they had a way of dealing with those set of people. 
we had a platform that validated, you know, knowing at that point it was needed globally in most of the countries where before you enter, you need to be validated. We had a platform built into our EMIT that you could validate anybody that have received the vaccine. Social listening framework was adopted to track, analyze, and manage rumors. And this was really, really very helpful because the social media team were on on it, tracking, being, listening to what was happening, developing strategies, and responding to them. We also generated social behavioral insights on the, on the object of the vaccine using the various pooling streams and tools from the online scanning to the U report pooling to the web pooling. And from this, we you know who the audience were, we developed the tools to address them, and we had steps to address the most of those things that were raised in those platforms. Example of some of the social listening that we had was here, we will look at from the vaccine confidence related issues to the vaccine convenience to the vaccine complacency. This helped the team to respond during the, the, the uh, pandemic itself. And we also have example of the social media pool across the platforms where we wanted to know how many of the people, the public perception in convincing their family members and so many other areas that we've been tracked. We learned a lot of lessons in the course of the implementation of the pandemic period that has helped us to be where we are and plan forward for our future as a country and be able to improve routine immunization. Some of these lessons learned was the fact that during the pandemic was the fact that primary health care, we have learned that resources are not enough yet to achieve universal health care and the pandemic exposed those gaps. So we are better planning now, we are planning better now for how to improve our human material and financial resources for the emergency in case there's anything that come up. We also note that government needs to own most of the thing and be ready. Having community to participate in all that we are doing, it is very critical in detecting, in mitigating and responding to any form of pandemic. Availability of a functional coordination structure for immunization was very helpful and we know that we need to sustain this even without waiting for any other pandemic. And then several service providers themselves, the health workers and professionals at the front line in routine immunization service delivery. Their knowledge, their skills, their attitude, acceptance and practice to service delivery can increase uptake of routine vaccination. It can also reduce the hesitancy we are talking about because if they themselves are compliant, of course, they will be able to recommend to their clients. Active social media presence, responding to inquiries and debunking rumors and using infodemics have also contributed to an improvement in the vaccine uptake in the country. This was very helpful and the lessons that we learned. Religious community leaders are gatekeepers at the community level. They can support this cause by sensitizing their subject to bring their children for immunization. So we have built this also into our immunization routine immunization system. The expansion of the vaccination to more vaccination sites, aggressive demand generation effort, integrating with other services was very helpful. Close monitoring and active supportive supervision using the GTS and also the ODK was very helpful. The electronic management of immunization data platform, Amy, was very useful in having real-time information and being able to intervene. And then our development partners were just excellent. Working as a team, of course, we have also used this to improve on our routine immunization and we hope to um, sustain on it. What is the way forward, having seen all this? As a country, we will continue to provide support for coordination at the sub-national level, especially sustain the mobilization that has been ongoing, making sure that we have additional um, human resources, the vaccine that is needed, the logistics that we need for the implementation of all our planned intervention. We also then to sustain support to the sub-national level for social mobilization activities through engagement with religious traditional leaders, using also the media, to um, reach out to the people. We are going to continue to support the state and the sub and the, and the LGS to ensure integration of services because it's the way to go. We'll provide incentives and reward for those that are performing very well and leveraging also on other opportunities that the uh, non-polio SIAs, the outbreak responses, using every opportunity to reach out to eligible person. We'll continue to remind, uh, continue to use the reminder phone calls and messaging to reduce dropout rate because this helps us know the feelings and the minds of the public. In conclusion, I want to sincerely, on behalf of the team here, appreciate the organizers of this um, um, activity uh, workshop for the opportunity given to us to share our Nigerian experiences on what extensive looked like in our country and how we have worked to promote um, demand and how we are also using this opportunity to restore our routine in Asia. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Thank you. Over.